the toss and deferred. So we'll see the Bulldog offense on the field first. Leon Berry back deep. Lee Tiffins got it teed up. Time to play ball. Bumpus from the two. And the freshman does a little sidestep across the 25 to the 26 yard line. Jeff Bumpus on the return. So the little guy in the middle of that pack is Tyson Lee, the captain of the offense. 21 yards on the return. He's had moments when things have gone well, and as you can see, a lot of moments when they have it. And that's going to be so critical for him tonight, taking care of the football. In order for them to have a chance, they must win the turnover battle tonight, and I think win it convincingly. It can't even be close. They come in minus four in turnover while Alabama's plus seven. But that gives you an idea why one team's four and five and one is nine and oh. First and ten for the Bulldogs, their own 25. And here is Tyson Lee. And he wants it all on the first play of the game. Might have a flag, we do. They got, they got a flag, but if the ball's not underthrown, they've got six points. They've got a touchdown because they had their man beat by three or four yards. Marquise Johnson was whipped on the play by O'Neal Wilder, but the underthrow made the receiver stop for the ball. They got the penalty, but they could have gotten a lot more. Here's Matt Moore, our referee. That's interference. Number 24 over the defense. 15 yards the As Todd says, it gives him great field position, but it could have been a lot more. Well, they play fake to Anthony Dixon, a little stop and go, and Marquise Johnson is whipped right now. And if the ball is out there and he can catch it on the run, he outruns Johnson to the end zone. Still a good start yes. for the Bulldogs. Now it's a first down at the 40. shift to the pistol setup with a quarterback in the shotgun of the tailback behind it. Hanrahan, the fullback, will lead the way. And here's a great run across midfield. On his way, Anthony Dixon. 18 yards for the number two rusher in the conference. And I'm sure he's thinking, don't forget about me just because Mark yep. Ingram's out here. Well, a lot of pride on his part, and he is the go-to guy for this Mississippi State offense. Anthony coming off a school record 252 yards a couple of weeks ago against Kentucky. And he's already the career record holder, having passed Jarius Norwood earlier this year. This time he loses about three. Let's take a look at the Bulldogs' impact players coming into this one tonight. O'Neal Wilder, well, we saw they went long to him on the first play of the game, and it almost was a touchdown. Burnell McPhee leads the team in tackles for loss and sacks on the defensive front. And on the back end, a kid that we saw really shine against Florida with two interception returns for scores. Freshman Jonathan Banks back there at the safety spot. So Mississippi State already in Alabama territory at the 45-yard line. Play action. You don't make too many more miss, though, in that Alabama defense. Justin Woodall got him a pickup of seven. A nice quick throw by Tyson Lee. I mean, he's going to be under duress all night from this Alabama defense. And he knows that. He got the ball out of his hands quickly, and they got a good amount of that yardage back that they lost on the second down play. You see the starting lineup on the top of your screen as Lee will line him up on a third down, at least with that seven-yard pickup. They could maybe manage to pick up a third and six. Third down has been a problem for them all year. Quarterback draw all the way. Lee broke one tackle. He's not going to get away, though, from Orlando McClain. Not many people do. Now, fourth down, and this part of the field, you never know. They might just go for it. Well, again, they've had some kicking issues. Their primary kicker, Sean Brockley, who's got the stronger leg of their two kickers, has been injured with a leg injury. Derek Di Pasquale has been the guy kicking, and he's accurate, but he doesn't have this kind of leg strength. That decision's being made right now. 
the only problem with going for this is if you don't make it, you give Alabama excellent field position to start. But it's kind of no man's land because of that kicking situation. Oh, yeah, he snapped the ball. Snap. He wasn't ready for it. And Alabama's got it. J.C. Brignoli snapped it, and Lee wasn't ready for it. And you know what? This, <laughs> I don't know what happened on this. I mean, J.C.'s got that bewildered look on his face. The way it was snapped, it almost looks like maybe one of the Alabama players hollered something, and he went on the sound of somebody's voice, but it wasn't Tyson Lee. I tell you what, the whole offensive line took off, yeah. not just the center. So either Lee wasn't ready and didn't know the snap count. The offensive line all took off as one. Alabama takes over with a first down now. Their own 36-yard line. Greg McElroy in a shotgun, empty backfield. Quick slant. And that was a dangerous toss to Marquise Mays incomplete. Mays had a big game last week against LSU. His career best six catches, 88 yards. Try to get him going early in the ball game. And they, they've been looking all year for another guy outside of Julio Jones to get the ball to. And Mays is starting to become that guy. He actually has more yardage and a bigger yard per catch average than Julio does. Second down and 10. The Cowbells are ringing. Mark Ingram. Got about four. Really, the question mark for Alabama certainly hasn't been their ground game, Todd. It's been the play of the quarterback. Last week better, but he had a couple shaky weeks yeah. before that. Well, he did. And, uh, you know, I think he got some of his confidence back last week. It, it wasn't a perfect game last week. He, he was better, but he still missed some throws that could have put some more points on the board. But uh, he's a pretty confident kid. And you know what? Here's the bottom line. He hasn't lost a game as a starter since uh, his high school days. Perfect as high school senior season at 16 and 0, and right now 9 and 0. Got Ingram out in the pattern as well. He's going to try to pick it up himself. He won't get there. Got to the 44. Not enough. KC right in Jamar Cheney there. I like this KJ Wright. I mean, he is a big, rangy linebacker at 6'4", 245 pounds. He's going to be playing on Sundays here in another year or two. P.J. Fitzgerald, we look behind him, set to kick it away. Leon Berry's back deep. Nice high kick. Berry with the fair catch, taken at the 16-yard line. 40-yard kick, no return. When we return, we'll check in with Aaron Andrews, third member of our team, but on third down for Alabama on that last play. Mississippi State's D comes up big. Well, I'll tell you, they've been close. Yeah. You know, they, they, they played a very, very difficult schedule. They've played some outstanding teams here in Starkville and have been very close. And uh, they, they need one of those games to get over the hump. From the 17, Dixon. Another nice run, flag down. Kareem Jackson knocked him out of bounds. It's going to be a holding call against Mississippi State. So they're going to took away what little field position they had. Holding. All right, we're having trouble with Matt Moore's. Referee Mike, let's check in with Aaron. Brad Todd mentioning a lot of these Mississippi State losses, very, very close games. And some of these players telling us yesterday the difference with this game and the Florida game is more confidence. But despite their confidence, guys, Dan Mullen coming over to the offense and telling them to relax. J.C. Brignoni saying Lee told him to just go, go. They told him to go, go, and they're trying to get, get out to the 20-yard line. So another nice play on the swing pass, and Dixon's doing all the work right now. Well, and already, I mean, we were here for the Florida game, and Dixon is off to a better start. Way better. You know, the, the thing with this guy, he is a big physical back that has to run with a head of steam. And if you get to him and make him dance around or make him run sideways like Florida did, then he's not effective, and he gets frustrated. We saw him in that pep rally, and I said to him yesterday, I know you're a pretty good dancer, but when you dance around, you're not as good That's a running right. back. When he goes hard and gets that hole fast, he's a load. Lee fires. Nice catch. And 
one first down and a lot more. Chad Buffus, the freshman. They keep hoping that he's yeah. going to become their big play guy. Just went 24 yards. I talked to Kirby Smart before the game, and he was very aware of him. He said, you know, we recruited this guy. We liked him. And he's just going to run out here, catch a quick pass, and then turn up field and break one tackle. He's working on the safety. Woodall shakes one tackle and makes a nice game. That's his 27th catch of the year that leads the team, the freshman out of Tupelo. A lot of shifting going on, and the officials with a whistle. The whole play here. I think there might have been an injured player for, yeah, Woodall was injured at the end of that play and was just getting off the field late. I think that's why they're resetting everything. And it looks like a finger, maybe dislocated type thing. They're trying to pull on it, and he's not happy about it. Yeah, they're pulling Ouch. his finger, and he's trying to pull away. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> That's not one of those times when you say, go ahead and pull my finger. That's not good. No, that's that's that. not good. First down, meanwhile, for Mississippi State. Lee, they're going to run a little option here. And a pitch to Dixon. Dixon will ahead of steam into Alabama territory. Pick up an eight. See, the last time we were here, and Anthony Dixon, he was hyped to play Florida, but Florida did a great job of getting a lot of penetration and not letting him get moving in the pocket. Whether they threw it to him or handed it to him, he had to do a lot of stopping and starting, dancing around, trying to find places to run. And when you don't let him get started, it's a lot easier to stop him. Lee trying to throw to Brandon McCray, and Marquise Johnson breaks that one up. So it's going to be third down and a long two. Alabama comes in one of the best defenses in the country they're ranked fourth in the nation in total defense second against the rush they only give up 68 yards a game so number 24 is getting a breather right now but he's done a good job Chris Ralph has yep. come in at quarterback we expected to see him in certain situations even play to play and we see it here because he's an excellent runner on third down and two and Alabama might have jumped, or was it a false start? Either way, they don't get the first down. But now it's a matter of whether it was a false start or an offside on Lorenzo Washington. It's kind of interesting with Ralph. You know, with some quarterbacks like that, you have specific situations you want to bring him in. With him, it's specific plays. Right. I mean, they have actual plays that they want him to run, and it's a matter of when they want to call them. On the defense, number 97. I'm right forward from the previous spot. First down. Automatic first down. Tied, not a highly penalized team. That, that five yarder cost him a first down. Woodall's back in there after you see the tape on his right hand. Those last two fingers now taped in the glove. We'll see if that affects his play in the secondary at all. Ralph stays in there, quarterback. He'll keep it straight up the middle. They faked the fly sweep to Bumpus, and then he just went straight ahead. I'll tell you, we, we expected to see Ralph, but I think one of the reasons we're seeing him even sooner than maybe we thought is because Mississippi State tonight is playing with one of without one of their key guys, right. Christian Ducree, their backup tailback. And so they still need to rest Dixon and keep him fresh. So we get some of those other carries with Ralph and also Arnell Stallworth, number 30, who is the third team back. Just notice that Terrence Cody went out. So a big hunk of that middle on the defensive front for Alabama. Not in there right now. Tyson Lee back at quarterback. Takes one step, backpedals, fires, too high and intercepted. Picked up by Mark Barron, his fifth of the year. Todd, it all goes back to the first play of the ball game. You and I talked about it during one of our breaks. You can't waste opportunities against a team as good as Alabama. And there goes another one. Mississippi State has had some very close games. They were at about the six-inch line against LSU. Lost by four, Georgia Tech's the number seven team in the country. They lost by 11, Houston and Florida. And you can see they played a lot of very good teams very well. Well, right now they're in a scoreless tie with the number two team in the country, but they've missed 
on a couple of chances that could have put him out in front here in this first quarter. Mark Ingram. About three before mm -hmm. Pernell McPhee made the stop. Go back to this interception because Tyson Lee's got to make great decisions in this game. Now he's five foot nine, and watch when he goes to throw this football. He's going to throw it over a six foot four linebacker and in between two defensive backs. I mean, there's no room to throw that football in there. I mean, that's one you got to either throw somewhere else or run or throw it away. But you can't take that chance when you're moving the football and hurt your team like that. McElroy for Alabama, second and seven. He fires one in there to Marquise Mays, and that's a first down. And between the hedges there, in front of the biggest crowd ever here. We don't know the final numbers, but they put in some temporary bleachers, and they sold standing room only tickets. That's how big a ticket this one is tonight. Ingram trying to get outside. Got a nice block. Mark Ingram. Down the sideline, big gainer for number 22 as he goes 21 yards. Yeah, Marquise Mays is the guy who got the big block out there on the edge. I mean, it looked like it was going to be a gain of maybe two, three, four yards. But watch Marquise Mays, one of the receivers out here. He's going to just peel back. Here he comes. The second block he got is the one that secured the edge. He got one block down the field and peeled back and got another block and got Ingram to the corner. Mark's got to be thinking, you know, I didn't have to get any yards after contact there. Nobody touched him. Because yeah. he will pile him up after you hit him. He's hard to bring down. First down at the 46. And around. Mays. And he got the corner. And close to the first down. Maybe just a little bit shy. Yeah, this Alabama offense, I mean, the biggest problem from them has been in the red zone. They've not been able to score touchdowns in the red zone the last four or five games. But when it comes to yardage, they've been very balanced. They've had a good run-pass balance. And, and they, they've actually, from a production standpoint, are ahead of where they were last year. But when they get in the red zone and not score touchdowns, that's what everybody is uh, really concerned about with this team. Draw play, Ingram going to have the first down. Well, they pass for 202 yards a game. They rush for 213, so there's your balance. And Mark Ingram, well, he's a balance by himself. 128 yards rushing a game, sixth in the country, first in the SEC, 11 touchdowns already. I mentioned he's really hard to bring down, and after contact, he can go 84 a game after contact alone. We saw him go for 246, which was a home stadium record at Brian Denny. And of course, he's on everybody's Heisman watch list now. The sophomore out of Flint, Michigan. Joins McElroy in the backfield. Play action. McElroy fires to Mays again. He's trying to get away from the defender, and they'll bring him down as he got just inside the 40 yard line to the 39. Alabama. Their impact players, Julio Jones, everybody knows about him, took 173 last week that helped in the win over LSU. I don't know if there's a better defensive player than this guy in the entire landscape of college football. Rolando McClain calls all the plays defensively, knows where everybody needs to be. And I put Lee Tiffin in as an impact player because of kind of what Todd said. They kick a ton of field goals, and he's the school's all-time leading scorer. If it comes down to needing three at the end of the game, I wouldn't mind having him on my side. Whoa, Ingram almost like got tangled up with his quarterback on the handoff, and Nick Bell rings the bell for everybody in here. Yeah, it looked like he wanted to cut back right away and maybe lost his footing a little bit, and Nick Bell was into the backfield quickly to trip him up. The big play by Nick Bell, because now it's third and seven for Alabama. Look, it looks like he wanted to try to make a quick cut back, yep. and Nick Bell was able to get his feet out from under it. Nick's got the right last name for this stadium. I'll give him that much. Eighth play of the Alabama drive. Ingram out. McElroy might be under a little bit of pressure here. Third down and seven. Julio's down at the bottom, the big receiver. He's looking the other way on a quick slant, but that's gobbled up by Chris White. Nice defensive play by the outside linebacker. Chris White for the stop. It's going to bring up fourth down and almost four. Play game three. Fourth down. Well, Alabama's going to stay out there offensively. Mississippi State already went once on fourth down and snapped it to their quarterback when he wasn't ready. 
And I'm sure Alabama's thinking, let's not do the same thing. I wouldn't be surprised to see a wide receiver screen to Julio, see if he can break one tackle, but they're going to take a timeout. McElroy didn't like the looks of something. He'll call timeout. 3.06 remaining first quarter. We're scoreless in Starkville. Alabama, 9 of 12 on their fourth down conversions this year. They've got to get it to the 34-yard line of Mississippi State. McElroy all alone in the backfield. Here comes the blitz. The Woo! throw is Aaron. Wow, did he get caught. And Mississippi State takes over. Uh, McElroy's not up yet. Charles Mitchell. Charles Mitchell caught him right in the chest. I mean, he was coming full speed and hit McElroy right up under the chin. Boom. And it wasn't helmet first either. It was shoulder first. It was a clean hit and well-timed blitz by Mitchell. Mississippi State now takes over offensively at the 39-yard line. So each team has tried a fourth down. Both have come up empty. The counter to Dixon. Maybe a yard. That's about it. Rolando McLean, the linebacker, made another tackle. Rolando comes in as the leading tackler for the defense of Alabama. He's on everybody's finalist list now. I mean, you, you just look at uh, the Butchers Award, the Lombardi, the Bednarik, just yeah. he's on every one of them. Yeah, he's a special, special player, both physically and mentally. I, I think he's, he's at a high level on both fronts. He's going to flare it out to Dixon. Brought down by Woodall. And it'll bring up another third down. You know, I, I think one of the greatest things I heard, I mean, you think about a great compliment. This was Javier Arenas, who's an outstanding player in his own right on this Alabama defense, said of McLean, said, imagine or picture Coach Saban being huge and able to play football. <laughs> That's what it's like out there with Orlando McLean. Oh, boy. Talk about a coach on the field, yeah. Yeah, yeah Nick is not 6'4", 258 pounds. Though so sometimes his players feel like he might be. Third and seven. Lee in trouble. He's not going to get away, and guess who got him? Orlando McClain. Loss of eight and a putting situation for the Bulldogs. See, when Tyson Lee throws the ball out of the pocket, he's going to have difficulty because of his height or lack of height. And so, uh, but he did the smart thing of not throwing the ball into coverage. I mean, your defense is going to going to play with you and hold him in there. Last year, Javier Arenas, who's on the other end of this punt, had six punt returns for 153 yards. He won't get a chance to return this one as it's going to bounce in front of him and roll down to about the 20-yard line. Well, so, well, it's number two Alabama tonight, and they're playing them even here in the last minute of the first quarter. And McElroy, who took that big shot the last time he took a snap in the shotgun, got him set up with the 20. Out to Ingram on a screen. Mark Ingram weaving through traffic and diving forward and almost got to the first down. Let's check in with Aaron. Brad, just an update when Greg McElroy came over to the sidelines. Really no Alabama trainers came over to him. He looked fine, but the one thing he's doing is stretching out that right wrist. I don't know if he got hit on it or landed on it. Again, he wasn't attended to by any trainers, but um, he keeps uh, kind of moving it around, loosening it up a bit. A perfectionist, an admitted perfectionist in everything he does. He worries about the one class he didn't get an A in in college. So sometimes he tries to be a little bit too precise with things. And he's going to keep it here and get a first down and a bunch more. Knocked out of bounds, but he's got it all the way out to the 45-yard line. Well, you got to keep that, any defense, honest when you run the zone play, and that's a quarterback's option on his own. If that guy chases the play and doesn't respect the quarterback bootleg, in this, lay, this case, Pernell McPhee didn't even pay attention to McElroy. That's what you have to do. Pull the ball and run and make that guy play honest. And the first quarter has come to a close.
No score. Mississippi State on their home field. Holding number two Alabama in check. But the Tide moving offensively. We'll see how they do when we come back. Got to get the ball to Julio here. Maybe right here on this play. Get him involved in your offense. Didn't touch it at all in the first quarter. Here he is right here. We start the second quarter with a first and ten for Alabama. Ingram left side. Look at that. I mean, that was maybe no gain or one yard, and he ended up with five. Mark Ingram and Anthony Dixon, with all due respect to guys like Tate at Auburn and uh, Hardesty at Tennessee, these two guys are the best in numbers and in the way they played and carried their teams on their back. Both over 1,000 yards. Different in stature, different in styles, but... Uh, Without question, the go-to guys for these two offenses. Mark's getting a little shoulder pad adjustment on the sideline as Trent Richardson takes his spot in the Bama backfield. And here he comes. And he's close to the first down, fighting for about four yards. Kyle Love and a whole pound of Bulldogs trying to bring him down. Richardson, a guy that very well thought of on this team, too. Super fast. And over 400 yards and four touchdowns coming into this game. And he was one of the top recruits anywhere. I mean, they expected him to really contribute a lot, and he is. But the fact that Ingram has played so well has just limited his touches. He stays in there on third down and a yard. He'll get the call, and he'll get dropped short of the first down, or maybe not. Great second effort by Richardson to stretch it out, and he might have gotten it. I think he did. Yeah. Well, we talked about the yards after contact for Ingram. You could say the same thing for Richardson, a, a very physical runner in his own right at 5'11", 220. Much more physical than most true freshmen that come out of high school. And watch him get hit, get stood up, get knocked behind the first down, and then reach forward the football for the first down. If he's 180, he probably doesn't get that first down. But yep. you said 220 and then stretching it out. Nice job to pick up. The first at the 45. Now it's McElroy off play action. Fires wide open. Darius Hanks. Touchdown. <laughs> 45-yard career long for Darius Hanks. And Alabama's on the board. looking first to Julio Jones on the post and they had two guys run to him and nobody went with Hanks and McElroy made the right decision go to the uncovered guy Tiffin in for the point after up and good Alabama strikes first Greg McElroy is 12 touchdown toss of the year the third that number 15 has carried to the end zone seven nothing Alabama he's at 7 o'clock, Darius Hanks caps an 80-yard march in six plays. His third touchdown, and as I said, McElroy's 12th of the year. 7-0 Bama. The kickoff to the 10 to Bumpus. And he got about 20 on the return before... Alabama brings him down. Todd's going to take us back to the touchdown. Well, I just want to make a point. Here's Trent Richardson, all right? And a lot of times backs have trouble in pass protection right out of high school because they're not used to doing it. But watch Richardson. Understand where the pressure's coming from off the corner. Gets a nice piece of Marcus Washington, and that enables Greg McElroy to step up in the pocket and see down the field. I mean, young backs, they have no trouble running it. Yeah. But that's what really snags them usually early on in their college career is learning about pass protection. No place to hide for Dixon that time. Anthony lost to about five. Now, Derek An Eric Anders did a great job of getting into the backfield, getting penetration, and stopping his feet, and then making him start to dance and move and look for a different place to run. Sometimes in that spread, when you're seven yards back there, you've got to run seven just to hit the line of scrimmage, much less if you're going to gain anything. That time he lost five. 
rushing leader here in Starkville, having passed Jerry Norwood. Ralph is in at quarterback, and he'll pitch it on the end around. Brandon Heavens out at about the 35. This was just a moment ago. Trent Richardson on the sideline with Greg McElroy. And he's telling him way to pick up that corner blitz that Todd just showed you on the replay. It's hard for a back to play in college football today if, if they don't understand pass protection, if they're not willing to do it. Here's a draw play. And again, Anthony Dixon having trouble getting that head start. He did get three. Marcel Darius brought him down. See, but he can't get frustrated. He just smacked the ground, and that was a problem in the Florida game. He got frustrated. When he got frustrated, he started trying to do too much and not working within the offense. He's just got to realize, you know what? This Alabama defense is for real. Right. They are going to make life very difficult for us, but we can't abandon the run, and I can't abandon the discipline I need to run our offense. Now, both Javier Arenas and Julio Jones are back waiting on Heath Hutchins' punt. High snap. Oh, man. Well, Arenas fielded it and said hello to Marcus Washington. I'm not sure that was worth not calling fair catch. That hurt way up here. Well, Anthony Dixon frustrated. He admitted that us. Here's 7-0. Over the Mississippi State Bulldogs. McElroy swing pass to Ingram. Again, Mark Ingram makes a, the first tackle not successful and goes for three or four yards. Chris White brought him down. Everybody was talking with Mark Ingram recent weeks since his name came up with the Heisman, and it really splashed on the scene in the game we did when he went for 246 yards, and they said, who would you vote for if you were going to vote for the Heisman? He said Rolando McLean, hands down. Yeah. <laughs> a guy he looks at on the other side of the field, the defensive leader, number 25, the linebacker and captain on the defense. But Ingram's in everybody's sights. Here he comes on a quick opener and takes it out for the first down. That left the door open for the Utes last year. They don't want that to happen again. Wow, nobody's <laughs> I would cover number eight. That might be a good idea. There you go. McElroy throws it to number eight. He drilled it in there on the quick slant, and he won't get the first down, but he draws a crowd. Greg McElroy, the wheel started wobbling a little bit about a month ago, and his last four games wasn't a good one against Ole Miss. It wasn't a good one against South Carolina with two interceptions and a fumble. Tennessee, a little bit better, but no touchdowns, and then finally things went his way against LSU a little more, including that touchdown to Julio Jones. Well, I think he looks better tonight than I've ever seen him look. I mean, he looks more confident. He's sure. He's setting his feet. And he's throwing the ball on time and with accuracy so far in the ball game tonight. Ingram puts his hand on his blockers and just takes those guys with him. And he's got a first down at the 45-yard line. Let's check in with Aaron. And Brad, after that LSU game, Greg McElroy kind of opened up to the media maybe a little too much and just talked about, yeah, it really ticks me off when people lose faith in me. There's a lot of hatred out there. Said some things that Alabama just kind of wished he'd, you know, just swallow and walk away, you know, not just blow it off. And that's something Nick Saban and even Mark Ingram told me. He talked to him. Don't worry about the media. Don't worry about the critics. You're the quarterback of Bama. You're going to have to deal with this all career long if you play here. Some of the former quarterbacks sort of spoke up and said, that just comes with a territory, young fella. And as Todd says, he's playing very well right now here in the second quarter on the road. Well, you know, that, that comes with the territory no matter where you play quarterback. Right. Sure. Uh, you know, because 90% of the people that watch a football game follow the ball. And so the quarterback always, on whatever team at whatever level, gets more credit than he should when the team does well and gets more criticism than he should when the team struggles. And, I mean, that's just the nature of the position. And in a place like Alabama, it's a glamour position, not just a highly visible position. Second down and nine here. Mays has been his favorite target so far tonight. They'll keep it on the ground. They pull out in front of Ingram. He's wrapped up by Jamar Cheney. And 
Cheney, the middle linebacker, makes his stop. We talked a lot about McElroy and his numbers. We got a little kind of a blind quiz here for you. Entering today, here's a quarterback comparison. As you can see, the numbers are fairly even. Completion percentage a little better on number one. You would never believe that, would you? Yeah. yeah. Of course, Tim Tebow added to those numbers again today as Florida beat South Carolina. He's got a lot of rushing yards, obviously. Third down, and the Cowbells getting louder. McElroy over the middle, and he got one in there to Darius Hanks. Well, that took a good throw, and again, the heat was coming. They got 11 on third and seven here, Todd. Well, Hanks is in the slot. He does a nice job seeing the pressure, adjusting to it, and a nice throw by McElroy. He zips it right by the umpire's ear. Yep, low and away from the defense. Enough for the first down, and uh, move the chains for Alabama. And again, this is the best I've seen Greg McElroy look in terms of his consistency of throwing the ball accurately. And it all comes from being relaxed, setting his feet, and showing good fundamentals. He's hit his last five now. That's another first down. Trent Richardson back in the backfield with him, and he'll get the call. Richardson broke a tackle, cuts outside. Here he goes. <laughs> Looks like he's wearing number 22's jersey, but it's really number three. 18 yards for Trent Richardson. Well, the, the same can be said for both of these guys. If you want to bring them down, you better hit them low. If you try to hit them high and bring them down and wrap them up, you're, you're not going to make it. Defensive coordinator Carl Torbush told us yesterday, you better get them below the buttocks. Yeah, you better wrap them up below the buttocks if you want to get them <laughs> on the ground. As only Carl could say it. Not as good as... We didn't do it as well as he no. did, but... Here's Richardson again, and nobody got him below the buttocks. He got eight more, maybe nine. K.J. Wright finally tripped him up. Well, I'm impressed with this young guy, too. I mean, Ingram is outstanding, could possibly win the Heisman Trophy, but this guy is going to be special as well. Richardson will go out, and Ingram will come in. It's second down. They can get a first down at about the three-yard line. Carl Tobish having a talk with his outside linebacker. Meanwhile, hoping the guys that are on the field can come up with a stop here. Ingram straight up the middle. Got it first and goal. So you know what's amazing, too, about this Alabama football team? Their offensive line, everybody thought coming in that was going to be an issue for them. They replaced three starters. Andre Smith, the left tackle, was a, a first-round pick. Antoine Caldwell, their centers in the league. Marlon Davis, their right guard. Well, they replaced three starters, and coming into tonight, they had actually rushed for 69 more yards on the ground through nine games than they did a year ago, and they'd only given up nine sacks. Shades of William the Refrigerator Perry. Cody's in as a lead blocker on offense for Ingram. First and goal, Alabama. They go behind him, and Ingram goes into the end zone for the touchdown. Mark Ingram with his ninth rushing score of the year. And he's hurt. Again, this was all second effort. It was reaching the ball over the goal line as he was going down to the ground. He's hit, he's stopped, he drives, and he reaches the ball past the goal line, and his helmet gets knocked off in the process. Not only did he take a big hit right on the crown of his helmet to break the tackle, but then when he hit the goal line, as Todd said, in the pileup, his helmet came off, and then a couple of guys landed on him. And Terrence Cody's going. And I hope the little guy's not hurt. He might have even cut his forehead, it looks like. Well, that's how tough he is. Comes off and meets his head coach without his hat on as he's going to head to the sideline. And they may need a butterfly or something on his forehead. I know Aaron will check on it for us, but we couldn't see exactly on the bottom of the pile. With, with that uh, 
With the gauze up there, you assume maybe he cut his forehead as well. Tiffin's extra point is good. <laughs> For that fine cuisine. Kickoff now, 14 to nothing. And it's Bumpus from about the two-yard line. And then Chad gets out across the 20, maybe to the 23 as we check in with Aaron. Brad, about four to five. Bama trainers working on Mark Ingram's uh, forehead. It was actually right above his right eye. No stitches. They just look like they butterfly it. Interesting enough, I guess some of the players were coming over from the sideline and saying after his helmet came off, they thought one of the Mississippi State players either punched him or scratched his face really hard. So no idea, but that's what the talk is over on the Bama sideline. No. Well, it looked like Charles Mitchell was the last guy to hit him, but I, when I looked at that replay several times, it didn't look like anything dirty. It just looked like he was the last guy to make contact, and his helmet was off. We just need Angelo Dundee over there on the sideline. Yeah, he's a cut man. Burgess Meredith, right? Burgess Meredith. <laughs> cut me, Nick. <laughs> They're still working on Mark Ingram. We'll need one of those for Manny Pacquiao and... Del Cotto, I guess, later on tonight, too. 4 10 left in the half. 14 to nothing, Alabama. Well, Mississippi State needs to get something going. Three and out their last two series. Of course, that's what Alabama specializes in, but they got to rest their defense some. They tried to do it with the backup quarterback and still not getting much. Let's check. All right, we'll see Reese at halftime with the guys. Three and a half minutes away. Another third down. something here to keep a drive alive and now they're going to have a false start which isn't going to help the cause. Marcus Green I think the tight end is going to be the guilty party. Matt Moore will tell us about it. Start this man. First start. Number 32 of the offense. Five yard penalty from the previous spot. Third down. Well before we snap it again we third down and long. Well, you get some extra time to think about the Aflac trivia question because we've got a timeout. Third and 11 coming back at Mississippi State in a moment. Tyson Lee at the controls. Has time. Floats it over the middle. It's incomplete. Mark Barron has got an interception tonight. Makes the play defensively. Well, and the only thing is, there's still 3:02 yeah. left, and Alabama's got two timeouts, so it could get worse unless Mississippi State's defense can do something about it. Well, a lot of time for Alabama's offense, but the first thing that Mississippi State has to do is make sure they cover this kick to Arenas. The last time they knocked him off his feet as soon as he caught the football, but ever dangerous, and really broke this game open a year ago. I mentioned earlier. 46 yarder and an 80 yard touchdown return last year. This time, fair catch again, but it's way up at the 46 yard line. What's the matter with Aaron's car? Oh, somebody ran into the back of her. She wasn't even in the car, so she's not injured, folks. McElroy. Kind of a weak play fake, and then he had the ball swatted up in the air by Pernell McPhee. All right, Reese, thanks. 2.50 remaining here. A lot of time for Alabama to work, especially with two timeouts. Richardson made the first man miss, but they swarm him. After about a two-yard pickup, he made another stop there. Again, Mark Ingram over on the sideline after having scored that last touchdown. He's got his helmet back on. But it's Richardson who's carrying the load right now with two and a half to go in a half. Well, now they're both on the sideline because it's third and long. Upchurch will actually come in, number five, to join McElroy in the backfield. Mississippi State needs a stop. Screen pass to Upchurch. And they will stop it. Just as he crossed midfield, it'll be fourth down and five. That was a really nice defensive possession for Mississippi State. Their offense, another three and out. Right before the half, you don't want to give up another score to Alabama, and their defense came through and uh, really played well on three consecutive plays. 
TJ Fitzgerald set to punt. Leon Berry waits on the other end at about the 10 yard line. Barry's going to get out of the way and hope it gets to the end zone, but it will not. Great play down there by Alabama special teams. Dre Kirkpatrick, I think it was the guy that got down there. 47 yard punt dropped at about the two yard line. Yeah, that's outstanding effort. Kirkpatrick is somebody that Nick Saban is really high on as a cover corner. Tall, rangy guy at 6'3 and uh, did a great job of knocking that ball back into the field of play. Campus facility. Our congratulations to Georgia Tech Coastal Division winners in the ACC. They'll play. It looks like Clemson and Clemson can win one more or if BC loses tonight. Clemson a winner earlier today too. So that could be a rematch of a really good Thursday night game we had on ESPN earlier this season for you. But how about the job Paul Johnson's done. I know Nick Saban will look at it and say that's good coach. Fifty seconds remaining. Don't want to make a late mistake here. Tyson Lee as the Bulldogs shift will come up under center. Now Alabama will call timeout. They, they only had two, so they'll use one now. They'll use one after the next down and try to get after a punt. Now Orlando McLean. A lot bigger than Ray Lewis. 260 pounds almost. He's six foot four. He's a leader of this Alabama defense. But we'll have one timeout left. And they'll use it right now. 26 seconds. They're going to force a punt by Mississippi State, trying to get more points before halftime. If they punt, from the end zone, Mississippi State, if they hurry it too much, you give Arenas right. a chance to maybe catch it on the fly and take off. Even if he gets it way in the air, you got one of the best field goal kickers in the country, and you still will have, you know, maybe 20 seconds to work with. And if I'm Alabama, rather than try to go block the punt, I try to block it up and give Arenas the best chance to make a huge play for you right here. He hasn't really got a chance to run with one. Hold those guys up and let 28 make a play. Let's see if Hutchins can get a hold of one. The rugby kick. They go to the sideline with it, just try to keep it out of Arena's hands, but he takes it on a hop at the 48. Whoops, flags down. I think they're saying that he called or somebody called fair catch, and then he tried to advance it. So that didn't work out very well for Alabama. The officials will have a committee meeting here, and Matt Moore will give us a call. Dead ball, delay a game on the receiving team, advancing with a, a ball after they call the fair catch. First down. Well, I didn't see the fair catch called. Well, Arenas is running towards it. He's just telling, he's telling his guys to get oh, away from yeah. it because he knew it was going to bounce, and the referees interpreted that as a fair catch signal. And yep. I can see why they would see that, even though the, the hand was not above his head. I could see where they would uh, they would have thought that. So as it is, 18 seconds with no timeouts. They need at least 20 yards to give Tiffin a shot at a field goal. McElroy steps up, and now he's going to run with it. He can get the first down. The clock will stop at least momentarily, and it looks like he did. Clock still running. Now they stop it. And they'll probably spike this thing as quickly as they can and once it's ready for play unless they're going to measure <laughs> well, and KJ Wright the linebacker for Mississippi State is not only banged up his shoes off he was trying to get his shoe on quick he's coming out of the game now so they will bring the chains on right now where they've got it spotted with our line it's a first down by about the length of the football, but we'll wait and see. It's at least that. It's exactly that. So first down. Now they still can't snap the ball until the chains are back on the far side. 
So those guys have to hustle over into place, and that should give Alabama time to get in their formation. Kind of a break that they got the measurement. McElroy trying to throw a quick out. Got it to Jones. Not enough time. They ran out of time. One more second, and they might have had a shot at a long field goal. Well, Coach Saban used his timeouts about the way he wanted to, but again, Arenas, with what the officials thought was a fair catch, probably negated any chance to put three more on the board before halftime. And Alabama will have to go to the locker room with a two-touchdown lead, and I'm sure they'll be happy with that anyway. And that guy, Anthony Dixon, has got to get back in gear in the second half. Let's check in with Aaron. Coach, we haven't seen Mark Ingram since his head injury. What's he's his status? Fine. He just has a cut over his eye. He's fine. He could have went back in the game. He'll be back in the second half. So you having a long chat with your quarterback there. Through consistently in the first half, what did you think of his performance? Well, I think we moved the ball well. I mean, we've controlled the ball. I think that's important against them. we got to keep playing good defense. So, you know, we got to play for 60 minutes in this game, and, you know, our defense played Played better after they got settled down after the first couple series. All right, thanks, Coach. They Brad. definitely played better after that first couple series. In fact, pitching a shutout right now at halftime. Mississippi State, meanwhile, has four first downs. Two of them came via penalty, and they've only run four plays in Alabama territory. They got to do better than that, or it's going to be a long, long second half. And Alabama will have the football first to start the third quarter on the kickoff as Arenas takes it at the seven yard line. Arenas weaves his way past the 30 and up to about the 31. That's where Greg McElroy and company will go to work. Dodd says this is the best he thinks he's seen him, and here's some of his action for the first half. Well, the reason he looks the best I've seen him is he's setting his feet. I mean, he's decisive. He knows where he wants to go with the football. He's not drifting when he throws. He's stepping up in the pocket. He also ran the ball three times for 30 yards in that first half, so he showed excellent decision-making, decisiveness, and then an accuracy throwing the football. And he's got his main tailback back in there with him. Ingram is in there as... Coach Saban told Aaron go to the locker room. He's okay. He'll be back out there. There he is. 59 yards in the first half. But the second half is when he becomes a different player, and he might end up with 159 before it's over. He's only going to get back to the line of scrimmage this time, though. It's not that Mississippi State's defense doesn't know that. And Carl Torbush, I'm sure, reminded his guys at halftime, hey, you got to wrap up number 22 here in the second half of the ball game. Mark Ingram tonight. Well, 61 yards, and, uh, you know, the thing about it is, I mean, he, he just keeps coming at you. And uh, Mississippi State, I think, for the most part, did a pretty good job of accounting for him and knowing where he is. But, again, he gets better as the game wears on, and he's just so difficult to tackle. Uh, gets stronger as this game goes. McElroy, this time in the pocket, found some trouble and a nice job by the Bulldog defense. A.J. Wright and Kyle Love get in there to bring him down as we check in with Aaron. Brad, I spoke with Dan Mullen coming out of the half. I feel like you and Todd were listening the whole time. The number one message to his team right now, keep fighting. But defensively, he said, you know, they did a decent job, but he mentioned just like you guys, Mark Ingram, you have to wrap him up, especially here in the second half. And boy, if they get a three and out to open the third, that would be huge yep. for the defense and the psyche of the entire team, I think. And it would give them decent field position to start their first offensive possession as well. McElroy steps up, throws short across the middle to Mays, broke a tackle, he's got the first down, he's got a bunch more, and now he's got a lot of room to run. Down the sideline and all the way down to the 28-yard line. Marquise Mays, who's been the main target for McElroy tonight, and it's a big gainer. Great play individually by Mays because there were two Mississippi State defenders that kind of had a beat on him, had thought they had him hemmed in. Watch the crossing route come from over here. Here comes Mays. Now he's short of the first down. There's two guys that think they have him hemmed in and just a little quick stutter step by Mays right there shakes both of them and then breaks out the backside for a huge game. On third and 10, they get 42 down to the 27-yard line. So much for getting the three and out on Alabama's offense. Now it's more of Mark Ingram with those big guys out in front of him. And he just falls forward for three, almost four. 
Chris White, the outside linebacker, made the hit. You know, I was in Tuscaloosa on Thursday, and I talked to Nick Saban about Mark Ingram, and I just asked him, you know, what what makes him special? He says, well, he's, you know, he's powerful. He can run behind his pads. I mean, he's faster than people think. He's got good quickness in the hole. But the thing that really makes him special is his his competitive spirit. I mean, he's such a great competitor, and wants the ball in crunch time, and that's uh, that's really what has propelled him this year as much as anything. Second down and seven. High snap, but he gets it to Ingram. And maybe two more on the carry. Bring up another third down situation here in the opening three minutes of the third quarter. Here's that high snap. McElroy did a good job to get it down and then get it in the gut of number 22. Now this is a play where they can maybe choose their poison. You can run or pass on third and five when you got a guy like that. Again, Mays has been McElroy's main go-to man tonight. Ingram's going to flush out as a wide receiver to the top of your screen. Quick slant intended for Mays incomplete. There was too much congestion over there. They had the lineman over there trying to get set up to lead the way. And McElroy missed him, so Tiffin will come out to try the field goal. Leading scorer in Alabama history right here, number 99, and he has been brilliant this year, 23 of 26. One of the finalists for the Groza Award. And it goes to the top place kicker in the country. He'll try a 39-yarder here. Trying to add three more to the Bama lead, and he got it. Just inside the right upright for Lee Tiffin. So it's 17 to nothing, Alabama. Game of inches. Yep, pretty close right there. Lee Tiffin just capped a 47-yard drive with another field goal, his 24th of the year. And look what he's done in the last five weeks. I mean, that is a weapon to have, yep, especially absolutely. when you're struggling in the red zone. You don't want to give away three. Well, and when your defense is as good as Alabama's defense yeah. is, you don't mind winning games 12 to 10 or 17 to 14 when you know you can rely on your kicker. Bumpus will take it at the 11. And just streaks up the sideline. Bumpus! He might go. Bumpus inside the 20. Gone. Touchdown. That's how you get back in a game in a hurry. You're not kidding. 88 yards. As he heads down the sideline. They say he stepped out of bounds on the 38-yard line. Oh, boy. So it's coming back, but still thrilling return and great field position for the Bulldogs. Right, the right foot right there, I think, was the culprit, wasn't it? It looked like on the crossover when his right foot actually went out of bounds, which is kind of strange when you're tight roping it. In. He's going to make a cut right, right there. there yeah. So I'm trying to make the cut back. The crowd doesn't like it, but I think it's the right call here. It looks like the right foot, the official is literally could have tackled him. So he's the guy that made the call. But nonetheless, Mississippi State has to take advantage of the field position. So instead of an 88-yard touchdown, it's to the 38-yard line, and Lee comes up firing, and he's got another first down, down at the 27. Well, Alabama doesn't give an inch to anybody, it doesn't yeah. seem, this year, when you look at their statistics. But the thing is, the way they play, their style, is they don't concede anything. They make you earn absolutely everything, and it all starts with their run defense. You realize in the last 23 games, they have held 20 teams to under 100 yards rushing. Only Florida and LSU last year and Kentucky this year as a team have run for over 100 yards. And it's been two years since an individual has gotten that much. Here's Lee down the middle. 
Oh, my goodness. He had a guy, Brandon Heavens. For heaven's sake, yeah. Brandon, turn around. It would have been a touchdown. Turn around. You catch this when you're in the end zone. And nobody picked him up. And yeah, Tyson Lee is going, Brandon, I know you're a freshman, but turn your head. It almost hit him in the head. Yeah, I, it was a little bit on his back shoulder, but he never got his head around in time to see the ball to make any kind of adjustment to it. There's another blown opportunity. As we said, you can't continue to give up the golden egg like that to a team like Alabama. Dixon. Nice cut back by Anthony Dixon head on at the 20 yard line. Woodall makes the stop, but Dixon, you know, he started off so strong. First carry of the night, he went 18 yards. But then it was 10 carries for 13 yards up until that last one that was positive yardage. Well, and the difference was early on, Alabama wasn't getting penetration. He was getting a full head of steam. And since that time, they've been able to get penetration in the backfield and make him stop and start. And that is really not his specialty. Huge third and four right here to try to keep the drive going and get some points. And they only got a yard, maybe none. Kareem Jackson. And that's fourth down. Well, you got to go for points here if you're Dan Mullen. I mean, you, you've gotten an opportunity to get on the scoreboard. They didn't get what they wanted on that third down play, but you got to get points. The only thing you worry about a little bit is your kicker because you've got two of them. De Pasquale is the guy that they're going to use. He's seven out of eight on the year. I remember, we talked about it earlier. Sean Broccoli normally would be kicking, but he's been battling some injury problems. And they miss it to the left. Just like that, another opportunity goes wide left. Wow. What could have been an 88-yard kickoff return for a touchdown, Virginia and Kentucky. I mean, that's a, that's a heck of a schedule to open up, and they're off to a great start. Here's a direct snap to Mark Ingram. We saw Ingram do this against South Carolina when the whole fourth, fourth quarter was basically him taking those direct snaps and running the ball. Speaking of college basketball, don't forget, all day Tuesday, 24 hours of hoops on ESPN. I'm going to be at Duke. Jimmy Dykes and I will be at Duke, but uh, there'll be games all day long, starting with Monday, after Monday night football on Monday night. So it's actually more than 24 hours of hoops. And you know, we're only doing, folks, 1,100 basketball games on our family <laughs> networks this year. So you might want to start off by watching the first 10 or so straight. Ingram again in the direct snap. Goes off right guard and he's got a first down. And we go off to Reese Davis. Reese. Wow. The Horned Frogs are lighting up the Utes. Here it's Alabama shutting out the Bulldogs so far. Ingram took a big hit from Jamar Cheney. Picked up maybe four. I tell you, I like the way Jim McElwain is mixing, mixing things up. Offensive coordinator for Alabama. He's got a quarterback who's played pretty solid tonight. He knows what he's got with Ingram. And then that Wildcat formation, you know, coming into the game tonight, Ingram averaged almost six yards per carry out of that Wildcat. They don't do a ton of it, but they do enough of it to make you prepare for it, and, uh, and they've been effective with it. What do you have in that drive, though, against South Carolina? Like 67, 68, 67, 68, yeah, 68 yeah. yards. McElroy, quick slant to Mays. He's going to try to wheel around in reverse field, and that won't work. There was just too much congestion in the area of that reception, and he couldn't get going. Loses two. Now, well, here we are again for Mississippi State. A third down situation. Alabama's in their own territory. They were here a moment ago. It was third and ten, and uh, Alabama ended up getting 40-some yards out of it. So uh, a chance for a stop and a chance to get decent field position if they can make a play here. Ingram to the sideline with the extra wideouts in. Then another quiet night for Julio Jones. Down to the bottom of your screen, number eight. And Alabama's going to take a timeout. Third down and eight coming up for the Tide. Not a happy camper as head coach on the sideline, but his team is in front, 17-0. Monday night countdown served up by Applebee's at 7. 
Right now, Alabama would like to serve up a third down. Mississippi State would love a stop. Well, Mississippi State showing pressure. There's no safeties back here. I think they're going to pull out of this, though. They do. McElroy has time. Over the middle. Tips. Incomplete, so the Bulldogs do get the stop. Jonathan Banks, nice play he made on Marquise Mays. Jonathan Banks, one of our impact players, just a freshman, tall and skinny, but he really knows where the football is. Well, Mays is going to run the in route, and they came with a little confusion on the route. Julio Jones broke out, Mays came in, and just a little bit high on the throw by McElroy. So the punt, their catch. The run up to make the fair catch is Leon Berry at about the 31 yard line. Well, 17 to nothing. So, missed opportunities so far. The key tonight for Mississippi State. Yeah, I mean, this was the first play of the game. They had him beat for a touchdown. It was underthrown by Tyson Lee. Then they had the kick return by Bumpus. You know, their offense isn't doing anything now. That could have been a touchdown called back. Then the throw to Heavens, where Heavens didn't turn around. They say, well, at least let's get on the scoreboard. And they miss a field goal. And against a team as good as Alabama, you must capitalize on any any opportunity that you get and they've got to get something going with their offense Tyson Lee in there quarterback from the 32 with Dixon and Stallworth joining it Dixon this time he's got some room and across the 45 so he breaks one open there for 14 yards again he's just got to stay calm I mean he's got to keep running and just Kind of stay where he needs to go. The right guard's going to lead him up through here, and Dixon just got to get right in his hip pocket and stay right in that gap. And that time is well executed inside by the blocking by Mississippi State. Here's Dixon bouncing his way out to midfield and across midfield to the 49. There haven't been. Too many trips into Alabama territory tonight for Mississippi State. They got one on that long kick return, even though Bumpus stepped out of bounds, and then they missed the field goal. But, you know, Todd, when you think about it, we're almost 10 minutes into this quarter. They've given up one big play, the 42-yarder on third and 10, but they held him to a field goal. Yep. Then they got a three and out, so, I mean, the defense is the kind defense of doing their is, thing. That's right. The defense has given them some opportunities here to get back in the ball game. Nice play fake, and Ali is going to load it and let her fly. Broken up. O'Neal Wilder had it. Marquise Johnson was there and he couldn't hold it. That's a pretty good throw. Yeah, it was a pretty good throw, and Wilder did what you want him to do. Kind of be like a basketball player. Box your man out and then try to go up and get the rebound. But a beautiful play by Marquise Johnson. He timed his jump as well and got his left hand in there and knocked the ball out. I mean, that was well played by Marquise Johnson. Third down at six. Mississippi State needs to convert one here. 0 for 6 so far. Empty backfield except Tyson Lee. He's going to try to run for it. And Alabama, they're so good. And something like that breaks down. Courtney Upshaw with the shoestring tackle. Fourth down. And the players looking to the sideline. Coach Mullen is it to say what do we do here? Do we want to punt? Yep. Play the field position game here and bring out the punter. Javier Arenas to return. Javier Arenas hasn't gotten loose yet. They drilled him on one that he didn't fair catch. And then last time the officials thought he was calling fair catch when he was trying to clear out the players around him. So he really hasn't got a clean shot. This is a fair catch taken right about at the 10 yard line. Check in with Aaron. Brad, rough night for Mark Ingram. He's got a cut above the eye. He cut his mouth. And now the equipment team here for Alabama is trying to adjust his helmet because the strap keeps, you know, coming off. The helmet keeps moving. And then it's rubbing up on that Band-Aid. And the cut started bleeding again. So my man's holding on here. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is how it all got started on his one-yard touchdown run. His helmet came off. And somebody got him in the forehead in the bottom of that pile. And then I don't know where the Aaron said he bit his tongue somewhere along the line, too. So he's got more blood coming out of his helmet than those new Horn Frog helmets that Reese was talking about at TCU. 
Worst starting field position for Alabama inside its own 10 yard line. Richardson broke a tackle and another. And he's running just like Ingram does. Picked up seven. How good is this guy going to be down the line? He's pretty special. Oh, he is. He's got 41 yards on six carries right now. One of the most highly coveted recruits out of high school last year out of Pensacola, Florida. And uh, he's so well developed for a for a youngster. A guy right out of high school. He is a physical running back. And now Richardson in the direct snaps of the uh, backfield behind McElroy dancing around a little bit this time and that won't get him anywhere. So again, that Mississippi State defense is playing tough. They give a little here and there, but they're doing their job in this third quarter, which is winding down near the three minute mark. Jamar Chaney, the middle linebacker, the leader of that unit, and their leading tackler. He's calling the shots, number 22. Julio Jones again has been shut out this half. He has not been a big part of the passing game at all. Here's Richardson. Nice open field tackle by Maurice Langston. You know, if you're coming up to hit one of these backs, you better do it with no hesitation. And that's exactly what Langston does. Watch Richardson. I think he got fooled by Langston. Langston came flying at him and didn't back away, didn't slow down, didn't break down, went right for the legs and wrapped him up where? Uh, uh, below the below buttocks. The buttocks. <laughs> he did wrap him up and turn him over and force the punt by Fitzgerald from his own end zone. Third three and out for Alabama now. Snaps a little high. Wow. Long kick. kick. Yeah, beauty. Fielded, though, and bobbled a little bit. Stepping out of bounds is Leon Berry, but still good field position. 50 yard kick with great hang time. Seniors. But another unique thing about this team all four specialists, punter, kicker, holder, and snapper, are also seniors. That, that makes a big difference. Lee, dangerous pass, but he did complete it out there for a short game of about four to Chad Bumpus. And let's check in. You should give him a whole sheet of helmet stickers, you guys, after watching that game today. He was spectacular. Fun to watch. Second down at six. Self, a Ralph rather, with a direct snap. So Chris Ralph in there gets it to about the 46 yard line. That's going to be third down again. Third and three. They got to get a conversion. I mean, uh, and I know this is what Alabama does well. I mean, you know, LSU was five of 14 on third down last week. Ole Miss, when uh, they played Alabama, they were 0 for 10. Right now, Mississippi State is 0 for 7 on third down. It's third down and three here. Ralph stays in at quarterback. It has you automatically thinking quarterback draw, or will he give it off to Dixon? He hasn't thrown. Now they're going to shift, and Dixon's going to be the direct snap man. It's a little wildcat for the Bulldogs. The wild bulldog. Dixon. Wow, what a play by Mark Barron. Mark Barron's made some big plays tonight, including an interception. You know, we, we know about how physical they are in the front seven, but Mark Barron is a very physical safety. He's going to play linebacker in this nickel package, and he reads it, and he takes him on high. And when he took him on high, he didn't allow Dixon to fall forward for the first down. He knocked him backwards. They're going to bring the sticks out to see how close they are. You know, when... Rashad Johnson graduated from Alabama. They were like, Ooh, what are we going to yeah. do that strong safety spot? This kid's doing a pretty good job, isn't he? Barron, five interceptions, big play there, and they are exactly that short. And the crowd wants Coach Mullen to go for it on fourth down in the length of the football. You know, the reason Alabama's defense was not fooled or shook up at all when they went to that shift was because with Ralph in the game, they expected the guy getting the snap to run the football. So all they did was move Ralph out and put Dixon back there. And he said, you know what? Same thing. Yeah, he's the guy who gets the snap is going to run it. <laughs> now it's Lee back in there. They bring in Hanrahan, the fullback. It's fourth down and about a foot. 0 for 1 tonight. They went on fourth and three on their opening possession. Ordinarily, you say quarterback sneak, but you don't have a very big or physical quarterback oh. here in Tyson Lee. Maybe they'll just go underneath somebody. Dixon 
Got it. Quite a bit more. Dixon nice. all the way to the 41 yard line. When he gets his head of steam going, yeah. and when you don't get his feet, he is a load to bring down. I mean, he just ran right through Justin Woodall. Anthony's got all the school records, most 100-yard games, single-game record we mentioned happened two weeks ago, all-time career rushing leader, passing Darius Norwood, who's with the Atlanta Falcons now. So he's had a tremendous career. He's a great kid to be around. He's got a smile that lights up not just the room, the whole building. He'd be smiling if he could keep it going here. Now they will throw with Ralph. Going deep. Man there. Oh, oh what a play again. Same guy. Marquise Johnson with two marquee plays defensively. Wow. That was a beautiful throw by the I mean, that was right where you want it to be. And Marquise just sticks that left hand in there again. Perfect timing, perfect hand placement. Uh, you just, that, that's beautiful work. That was better than the last one. Yeah, it sure was. Wow. So again, trying to go deep. To Wilder, and it was that close, but number 24 again denies the Bulldogs. Lee, he'll keep it. Spins his way to the 36 yard line. Ooh. Alabama does only three more points of damage to the Bulldogs. Yeah, that's Scott Cochran, their strength and conditioning coach, and uh, high energy guy like most of them are across the country, but uh, their off season conditioning program, they, they call it the fourth quarter, and they build everything towards being the best in the fourth quarter. Chris Ralph at quarterback for Mississippi State. On a third down at six. Four wide receivers, three up there to the top of your screen. Again, he threw an almost perfect ball to the end zone the last time he put it up. This time, straight run all the way. And they might have been thinking this is two down territory no matter what because they run about a yard and a half shy of the first down. And now fourth down in the fourth quarter, Pretty sure that uh, Mississippi State's going to say, well, let's just keep on going. Yeah. We're four and five. We're playing one of our biggest rivals from 80 miles down the road, and we're losing right now. So let's go ahead and pull the plugs. Might as well. Now, I've watched this guy. He'll hold these four fingers up and scream every play of the fourth quarter. I mean, he just. He's different now. <laughs> I'll tell you, he, he's, he's different. He jumps up and down, holds four fingers, and yells. Direct snap coming. Nope, timeout taken. Anthony Dixon was in the Wildcat formation. So on fourth and one, they were all ready to go for it. Coach looks like he's been clapping his hands, too. Either that or eating Cheetos. Those, those palms are pretty orange. Well, the SEC, we know already that it's going to be Florida and Alabama playing in Atlanta for the SEC championship as Alabama is on its way to be a 10-0, a perfect 10 and 7-0 Florida with their win over South Carolina earlier today. Atop the East, so the clash, if everything goes as planned, is going to be number one against number two unless somebody leapfrogs somebody else before that game coming up the first Saturday of December. And this was uh, this was one of those games that Nick Saban was worried about. You know, you come in here, he doesn't like playing here. A lot of people no. don't because of tonight a record crowd with the Cowbells, by the way, 58,103, which is a new uh, record. They set the previous record when we were here yeah. against Florida. Right. But so far, if if the Bulldogs don't get something going offensively, it's going to be Alabama perfect 10-0. Yeah. And, and Alabama, I think they, you know, Nick's done a good job of getting his team with the right mindset. Got the first down with Anthony Dixon. Well, he said to us, after you clinch, basically, he feels like it's another season, yeah. sort of. Start a new season. You yeah. know, you got to keep them motivated the right way. They got three games left and get it going again. And then this is a tough place to play. I mean, that, that, he knows that. And of course, Mississippi State's beaten Alabama two of the last three years right. as well. Yeah. That's exactly right. Last time was 07, 17 to 12. Tyson Lee, quick strike, big hit, but he holds on. Mark Barron made the tackle, pick up a seven, we pick up. Mississippi State, a 
approaching the red zone. Can they get a score, though? They're going to struggle to try to get the first down. Awfully close for Anthony Dixon. Orlando McLean again holding on. Number 25, the middle linebacker, going to help Dixon up. A lot of respect between those two. They've been butt heads for a couple of years. And again, Mississippi State going to change up personnel and go without a huddle. 77 yards tonight. He's kept his poise better tonight. Yeah. You know, he hasn't gotten frustrated. It looked like he might there earlier in the first half, but he's kept his poise and uh, running much better here in the third quarter. And uh, the offensive line obviously has something to do with that, a lot to do with it. But a lot of it is just his poise and staying within the framework of the offense. I think Mississippi State wants a measurement because they thought it was closer than the officials were on the field, and they're going to get that call, which will give them a little chance to talk things over as well. Well, it was close. A couple of chain links. For Mississippi State, a big drive, but they need some points out of this one. Lee, going to loft one, got his man, Dixon. Out of bounds. At about the five. A little bit of a change up there. Third and very, very short. They roll the quarterback out. And he does a nice job of directing Dixon beyond the linebacker to just kind of loft him the football. And they get the first down. It's first time we can say first and goal tonight for Mississippi State. At the Alabama five. Dixon. A direct snap. Uh, Alabama is waiting for him. He lost a yard. That one took too long to develop. Again, J.C. Brignelli is the center. Married player on the team. Yeah. I met his wife, Blair, last night in the hotel. Yeah, well, we were glad she was in the hotel, not the hospital. Yeah, She's yeah. very pregnant. Yeah, a little over nine months. Uh, Any time now. I'll tell you what, if they score here, it might be enough <laughs> excitement to, to put her over the edge. I guess J.C. said she's pretty excitable. Hard for her to keep yeah. calm in the stands. Yeah, met her twin sister last night as well. Lee in trouble. Got away, trying to get it back the other way, and there's no place to hide, and he's way back near the 20-yard line. That is a disastrous play. A loss of 13, disastrous. I mean, the problem is, again, he's too short to see over the defense. This is a Tebow fake. Step up, look to throw. Now, nobody's open. He has trouble seeing anyway. Then he's just trying to buy some time and make a play. And now they get themselves away from the goal line. Credit the Alabama defense for covering the receivers and then putting the quarterback on the ground. Now it's third and goal back at the 17. Dan Mullen called another timeout. He's upset with his quarterback and uh, more frustration right now on the Mississippi State sidelines. Having it first and goal at the five. Chris Rell back in at quarterback now to third and goal at the 17 for Mississippi State. Ralph has time. Fade to the corner and out of bounds. And the battle continues after the play, even though Brandon McRae doesn't know that he's out of bounds yet. Marquise Johnson coming into the game tonight was the team leader for Alabama with 11 passes broken up. And we've seen a couple outstanding plays by him in the ball game here tonight. Well, again, Mississippi State will try to get something on the board. Oh. Pasquale had missed from 36 earlier. This will be a 34-yard field goal attempt. This is after having it first and goal at the five-yard line. He passed well, 34 this time he got it. Finally, something on the board for the Bulldogs, but there's only 10.35 left, trailing by two touchdowns to number two, Alabama. 34-yard field goal ended a 44-yard drive in 15 plays. That's a lot of plays to only get three points. Arenas, now the 
return. And Javier's got something working here. The kicker got him, but he crossed midfield to the 48 yard line. 45 yard return. It's been kind of a down year, and part of that has been injuries. Yeah, he had an ankle and then a knee problem. And now, how deep about ball, how about, how about <laughs> touchdown? How about touchdown? Yeah. How about wide open? Get him involved. <laughs> well, Julio was looking at all our statistics and all our nonsense and all our I'm not involved. That's 48 yards involved for the score. Boy, how do you not cover him? I mean, he, even if he's not having a big night, you don't want him running behind your defense. That was easy for Greg McElroy. But, but they've got to have him. I mean, he's too good of a football player to just, he can't just be a decoy for your offense. Right. He has to be a factor. Extra point is up and good with 10 18 remaining in the ball game. Comes off the ball. The safety bites on the underneath route, and the other safety was going on the play fake, and nobody was there for Julio Jones, and McElroy gets him the football. This is a play called to get the ball to Julio, and not only do they get it to him, he gets it to the end zone. 24 to 3, Alabama. Now, uh, Julio Jones, who a year ago set all the Alabama freshman receiving marks when he almost had 1,000 yards, including 58 catches. That was a one-play 48-yard drive in about 17 seconds right there. Yep. As he picks up his third touchdown catch. And uh, he was right on our cue. Yep. And they're talking to his wide receiver coach, Kurt Signetti. Brother Frank is the offensive coordinator for Pittsburgh. From the five, Barry slips. Did he keep his foot? Because he didn't go down. Now he does at about the 25-yard line. Yeah. Well, the BCS standings coming into tonight. Florida number one, and they won. Well, Alabama is going to win and go to 10 and 0. Texas, big day for Colt McCoy and Jordan Shipley again. TCU, as Reese just told us, is. Whacking Utah pretty good. Cincinnati won. Boise, big winner over Idaho. Georgia Tech won the Coastal Division of the ACC today. LSU now leading Louisiana Tech. They were trailing a little bit earlier. I think that the, the way those rankings are right there is, is about as accurate as it can be, in my opinion. I think TCU is the best of those other undefeated teams. And maybe not quite as good as the three above it. Tyson Lee, again, he's going to have to tuck it here. Looks a pretty good shot by Orlando McClendon. The other way around, at least right now. Second down and seven. Mississippi State running out of time now, trailing by three touchdowns. And that won't do it. And the crowd will get a little anxious after a pickup of a yard. It seems like those two teams are always getting together yeah. tied. Well, every time Alabama's won the SEC West, when they've gone to the championship game, they've played Florida. And Florida has had the upper hand in those games. They've won four, and Alabama's won two. You know, last year in that game, Alabama really played well. I mean, they, they played well enough to win. And then in the fourth quarter, Tim Tebow made a couple throws and a couple hard-nosed runs that made the difference in the game. Lee wants to throw it back. Got it to Dixon, but long ways to go to the stick. Well, he got there. Then he puts a little punishment at the end. Kareem Jackson finally got him down, but it's a first down for the Bulldogs pick up of 18 on that pass play. By the way, we got a Todd's Taste winner. Andrew from Louisiana says, I plan on proposing to my girlfriend in Starkville on Egg Bowl weekend. We're eating at Restaurant Tyler because that's where I plan on proposing, so the gift certificate would be perfect. Either way, it's a great segment. I love Todd's Taste of the Town. Thanks. I got to tell you now, Andrew, you got the gift certificate. If she says no, yeah, it isn't really going to yeah. matter what you order. Make her pay if she says no. That's right. You know, go Dutch. <laughs> she says no. All bets are off. That's right. Use the gift certificate for yourself. <laughs> Down to eight minutes. Time running out. Mississippi State was trying to keep their bowl hopes alive. Talking about the Egg Bowl, of course, the end of year matchup annual get together with the number one rival, Ole Miss. 
But they were hoping that uh, they could stay in bowl contention, maybe pull a big upset, spoil Alabama's perfect season so far. Not working out. Lee tipped. And did Barron get another one? Nope, couldn't quite hold it. Or did he? Mark Barron, they're going to say intercepted this ball, and that's his second of the night. Uh, this should have been a completion. This is a pretty good throw by Tyson Lee. A little bit high, but catchable. And uh, just unable to bring it down. Leon Barry and see if Barron was able to get his hands under the football. Wow. I think he did. Yep, I think he did too. <laughs> That's a remarkable interception. Yep. The crowd here is not buying it. And again, the call on the field was interception. Mm -hmm. And so uh, there has to be in. Disputable video evidence to overturn that call, and I think the the replays will support the call in the field. That would be his second of the night and his sixth of the year for the sophomore automobile. And again, that was a spot they were worried about, and he's playing like an All-American. Yeah, it's really interesting. I, I talked to some of the old-time Alabama people out in the hallway at halftime, and so many of them think, you know, this team reminds them of the 1992 team that won the national championship. Tremendous defense, a serviceable quarterback in Jay Barker, who wasn't a great player, but, he, you know, he led the team and managed the offense. But it was it was geared by their defense and their special teams, and that's what this team is, is all about. I mean, well, they got a special guy in Ingram as well. Ruling on the field is confirmed. Interception, first down. They got the number two defense in the country. They've got, as you said, a great special teams because they've got seniors all over there, both punter, place kicker, snapper, holder, the whole thing. So there's your special teams, there's your defense, and then the offense. When you've got a Heisman candidate and you got a quarterback starting to play like he did again yeah. tonight, not bad. By far the best I've seen him play. I mean, he he has looked sharp tonight. He doesn't have to win games for you. No. He just has got to not lose them. You know, I mean, he's got to do the right thing, make the right decisions, get the ball in the right people's hands, and manage the show. Well, now this is where Mark Ingram can become the show. And there he goes. Mark Ingram, gone. Touchdown, Alabama. 70 yards for Mark Ingram. I kind of meant they'd use seven minutes on a yeah. drive. I didn't mean 17 seconds, yeah. but nonetheless, it works. We got a great block from Barrett Jones. I mean, this offensive line, I'm impressed with them, too. They're athletic. They can pull. They can lead. They get to the second level. Remember when I said at halftime when Mark Ingram had 59 yards rushing, he might end up with 159. He's got 149 right now and two touchdowns. Career long for number 22. Just like that, the game busts open as Mark Ingram busts it open up the middle and all the way to the house. Following our matchup here between Alabama and Mississippi State. Tiffin the kick. This one all the way down to the three to Leon Berry. Berry busts it open. Leon Berry midfield. He's going to be tripped up at about the 19 yard line. So another long kick return. One was by Bumpus. He stepped out of bounds. Leon Berry didn't and went 78 yards. Well, and as all great coaches will do, Nick Saban will now have his motivation oh, yeah. for this next coming week. Kickoff coverage. Got to get better. Nice job by Leon Berry. This is bad tackling. And Tiffin, you don't want your kicker to have to make the tackle. You got 10 other guys down there. Robbie Green saved the touchdown. Yep. And you can just tell by the look on Nick's face, although sometimes that facial expression doesn't change all that much between winning and being close. It's not close right now, but Mississippi State can close the gap a little bit if they can score in a hurry. 31 to 3. Chris Ralph, the quarterback. And Ralph wants to go to the end zone. Does and it's tripped, knocked away by Barron. What a game Mark Barron's having. Well, Mark Barron and Marquise Johnson. I mean, they, they, they just, again, the, the thing I love about this Alabama defense, I mean, okay, it's 31 to 3. There's seven minutes left. They don't concede anything. I mean, they will not give up a play 
at all. I mean, they are there for every play. If you're going to get something on them, you're going to earn every yard and every point that you get against this defense. Talk about laying out to yep. prevent this one. Boy, look at that vertical jump by Mark Barron, and then lands in the end zone, prevents the score. The scary thing to me about this defense is they're missing one of their best players Dante on the whole Hightower. team. Dante yep. Hightower was their sophomore linebacker who was kind of their do everything guy. Six foot four, 255 pounds, great pass rusher, and he was the wild card matchup problem for their defense. He got hurt in the Arkansas game, and it really changed their defense. I mean, he was versatile enough to rush the passer, to play off the ball, to, to get into pass coverage. They got other guys who can do what he did, but not one guy in particular. Whoa, that one was going nowhere from the get-go. And there's the guy that does everything for him now, Orlando McLean. Well, I said he was one of the two best players. Yeah. That's, the, That's other the other one. guy. Yeah. <laughs> Those are the two best players on this Alabama defense. That was after taking that helmet right on the knee. Dante out for the season with a knee injury. Doing really well in his rehab. He's not going to be back for the bowl game. He won't be back till next year, but he's he's doing exceptionally well in his recovery. And Mississippi State's going to have to take another timeout here. So that's it for their timeouts. They're down to 552. And in a big hole, the number two Alabama. I think it's going to be a great race down to the very final night, December 5th. The throw to the corner, and again broken up underneath by Marquise Johnson. Big night for number 24. He's played it a lot of different ways, on top, underneath. Whatever he's got to do, as you said, just keep fighting for the football to get it out of there. Not a bad pass again. Mississippi State's had three possessions in the red zone tonight. They missed a field goal. They lost the ball on down, and they got one field goal. That's all they've got on the board. Johnson's going to come out. As he landed a little bit funny as he has two or three times in that end zone preventing Mississippi State from scoring. So it's first and ten Alabama. And now Richardson can take over for Ingram. Knight's probably done with 149 yards and a couple of scores. I don't think uh, Mark Ingram hurt his Heisman no. chances tonight. Alabama will be a perfect 10-0 and, and I don't think Orlando McLean hurt his Butkus or Lombardi or Bednarik or all those defensive award chances tonight too because he's been the man. He doesn't really like football when he gets once in a while an off weekend when they had their off weekend. I said did you, did you watch football? I said I, you know, I don't really like football when I'm not playing football. So he said to him what do you do for fun? And as Richardson goes up the middle he said well you know just like to watch TV and relax. I said well if you don't like football what do you do like Discovery Channel? He said, yeah, exactly. I like that show. Aaron, what's it called? Uh, Man, Man versus, versus wild. wild. Man versus Wild. So he says, yeah, I like Man versus Wild. He got all fired up about it. Aaron goes, that's all fake. <laughs> you just, you like wrecked the kid's dream. It was unbelievable. I've never seen a big, athletic, strong guy like that just crumble. He yeah. did. He almost Shoulders started droop. He almost started just, crying. Yeah, he did. And, and then crushed. apparently later on in the week he checked back in with Alabama's uh, sports information director and said, "Come on, man, is that for? Is, is it really <laughs> fake? It is. I, I've heard about it. It's controversy. Well, yeah. Either that or I'm starting it. I know. <laughs> you know you're crushing my son <laughs> Quinn too yeah. right Sorry, now Quinn. because Quinn loves Man vs. Wild also. I, I even uh, liked it. I yeah. watch it. You know. Well, the guy still is crawling through the weeds and eating yeah. bushes and everything, isn't he? But you know, Aaron says he stays in hotels at night. I don't know if that's true. And, I don't want to get involved. It was Aaron Andrews that started all this, and it was Rolando McLean's dreams that were shattered. That's basically the part of the story I wanted to tell you. We got man versus wild. We got Alabama against Mississippi State. It's 31 to 3. There's 3:35 left, and then Alabama and Florida will have likewise perfect 10 and 0 records. Here's the points. 
And it's going to go out of bounds at about the 30 yard line. We're just closing in on this game. Oregon's coming up next. Terry Gannon's got it. All right, Terry, thanks. We'll get it to you in about uh, three minutes and 20 seconds. Those guys here in Starkville came prepared. Oregon atop uh, the Pac 10. Arizona and Oregon, the top two teams. Stanford right in there after shellacking USC today. And now, breakout by Elliott. Robert Elliott. That win by Stanford, the most points ever given up by a USC team. Whew. The wheels coming off the, the big Trojan horse. So we're down to three minutes. Alabama number two, Florida number one, Texas a winner today. They're number three. Todd, we've seen one, two, and three. Yep. Who you like the most? Ooh. That's as loaded as that uh, bison meatloaf you had. I last think night. I like this team the most right now. Intercepted by Marquise Johnson. Well, good for him. Yeah. And he deserves that. The way he's made plays, he deserves it. Look at my man Scott says, you know, we play all the way to the end of the fourth quarter. Yeah. We don't just start the fourth quarter. <laughs> And, and, and that but that is the identity of this Alabama football team. They play their best in the fourth quarter. They don't concede anything. And at a certain point in the game at the end they break another team's will and they win. OK let's say you get to the SEC championship game in Atlanta. You get to the fourth quarter and it's a dead even ball game. Who do you want playing quarterback. Well. That's a different question. In, okay, that, well. in that situation, I, I'm going with Tim Tebow. <laughs> but I, I do think Alabama's defense matches up and, and has a little bit more of an edge over Florida this year than they did last year. Yep. Because of the they don't have as much explosiveness as they did last year, Florida's offense. And I think Alabama's defense is a year better and a year more familiar with that offense. Well, they almost pitched a shutout tonight, did Alabama's defense. Three points it looks like is all Mississippi State's going to get unless they get a late touchdown. Now you get those two teams together and you look at how close things really are. Huh? I mean the thing about it is I, the, the, to me they're the two of the, two of the best defenses in, in all of college football probably the best two and Urban Meyer Nick Saban I don't think anybody's any better than either one of those guys you know I mean it's so I mean it's a very evenly matched game with the difference being Tim Tebow's experience compared to Greg McElroy. Again we work our way now to the two minute mark Greg McElroy can smile tonight he had a very efficient game no penalties on the offense no turnovers by the offense and 433 total yards which is a little bit more than they normally have they average about 415 but the balance was there again yep. tonight McElroy made the throws he didn't make any mistakes and then you know right on cue we say Julio Jones has got to get involved and they throw him a long touchdown and the next time they got the ball another one play drive on a 70 yard romp by Mark Ingram right up the middle and nobody touched him. takes it out for another first down which should just about do it. Well the sprint to final minute here. Well a record crowd came but had a great scene outside the tailgating and all of that the pep rally last night all fired up wearing black jerseys for the first time ever in the history 115 years of football in Starkville. And uh, that crowd, that record crowd of 58,103, a lot of them are back out in the tailgating area because it was all Alabama tonight. And another 10-0 start, 17th time in their school history, and the first time in Nick Saban's career that he's had back-to-back double-digit winning seasons. And so last year 12 and 2, this year they'd like to go 13 and 0, would be just about right. Uh, 14 and 0, I should say. I know they've got a date with another 10 and 0, but that's still three weeks away. Tonight they take care of business. They come up Highway 82. They go back down Highway 82 with a 31 to 3 win. Crimson Tide wins it. 31 to 3. Let's check in with Aaron. Brad, thanks. 
I just talked to you yesterday, and you said, yeah, I feel fine. My body's good. How are you feeling after a bloody mouth, bloody head? I feel pretty good, except my face is a little beat up, though. You know, they tried to beat up on me, but I just kept coming back fighting hard. Team did a real great job executing. We played a great game tonight. 70-yard touchdown run for you, the longest in your career. You have to tell us, once you hit 55, 60, what are you thinking at that point? I was looking at the screen. Like, I never really broke out that far in, in college before, so I was just running, just looking at the screen, where, seeing where everybody was at. How'd it look? Pretty good. That was textbook. Just how we write it up. You know, the Barry Jones did a great job of pulling up on the backer, and it was, everybody was where they were supposed to be, and it was a great executed play. If you do say so yourself, hey, the pressure is just going to continue to mount as the weeks go by, and as you continue to put up the numbers, everyone's going to continue to talk about the Heisman. How do you deal with it? Just keep, got to keep moving forward. Got to keep improving every week as a team. Got to keep getting better because there's always room for improvement. Never could look in the past, never could look too far ahead. Always got to focus on right now and getting better as right, right now. I don't know if you can see the lip right here, guys, in the eye. I took a beating tonight. <laughs> Thanks, Mark. Appreciate it. All right. Oh, he took a beating, but he, he kept on ticking, didn't he? I think he gave a little bit of a beating, too. Uh, yeah, he? I think he did, exactly. 31-3, to three, the final.